。明けまして、おめでとうございます。Happy New Year 2021! Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining from. Thank you very much for tuning into Japan US Aerospace Corporation Seminar 2021. My name is Shimasaki Seichi, Science Counselor at the Embassy of Japan in the United States, and I will be moderating today's event together with Onoda Masami, Director of JAXA Washington DC office. Today, We have distinguished speakers to discuss Japan US partnership in space exploration. It is truly an exciting time for the space and science community, and we look forward to witnessing more of historical moments together with the US and other international partners in the year 2021. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. The recordings of this event. Will be uploaded on JAXA YouTube channel after the event. Also, we are not taking questions from the audience during the event, but please do not hesitate to contact JAXA Washington DC office if you have any. Now, it is my honor to invite Ambassador Sugiyama Shinsuke of the Embassy of Japan in the United States of America, Minister Inoue Shinji of Cabinet Office of Japan, and Minister Hagiuda Koichi. Of Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan to deliver remarks. Shinnen Akemashite Omerito Gozaimas. Chube Nihon Kok Taishi no Sugiyama Shinsuke des. Nisen Nijunen wa Shinata Corona Virus no Ekyo o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o 専門家の方々によれば、100年に一度の大きな挑戦、危機の年であったと言えると思います。しかし他方で、えー、有人月面探査に向けた新たな計画の進捗をはじめとして、宇宙開発においては、日米ともに大きく進展してした年であった。とも言えると思います。私自身、昨年末には、米国を中心として国際協力で進められている、月軌道上の拠点、ゲートウェイ計画に関する国際約束について、プライデンスタイン、NASA 長官とともに、国際約束に署名し、新たな日米宇宙協力の一歩を踏み出すことができたことを大変光栄に思っています。今後とも我が国の唯一の同盟国、最も重要な同盟国である米国とともに月の探査のみならず商業宇宙協力、安全保障面においてもさらに日米宇宙,宇宙協力が進化していくことを心から期待をしていますどうか2021年が皆様にとって新たな希望につながる一年となるそして実際に昨年とは違った素晴らしい年になるということを心からお祈りして私のご挨拶に変えさせていただきたいと思いますご清聴どうもありがとうございました宇宙政策担当大臣の井上真嗣です新春の喜びを申し上げます我が国と米国は探査、安全保障、産業といった宇宙のすべての面で包括的な協力を行っています我が国は米国が主導する月探査計画、アリトミス計画にも参画しています来年度からは民間の月面活動の拡大も視野に新たな研究開発を開始するなど政府を挙げた取り組みを推進いたします。本計画を通じ宇宙探査に関する日米両国の協力がさらに発展することを期待しています。昨年10月にはアルテミス合意に署名しました。
本合意は民生分野における宇宙探査利用活動の重要な諸原則を確認するものでありこの分野でのルール作りについても我が国として米国とともに積極的に取り組んでいきます。また我が国の順天町衛星への米国の宇宙状況把握センサーの搭載いわゆるホステッドペイロードは宇宙安全保障分野における日米協力の最初の具体的な取り組みとなりましたこれに加え我が国の政府が一体となった宇宙状況把握システムを地上宇宙両面から整備することにより宇宙状況把握体制の確立と能力の向上を図ってまいりますさらに近年宇宙デブリ問題が深刻化しまた宇宙を戦闘領域と位置づける動きが広がる中我が国は宇宙空間の持続的安定的利用の確保に向けた宇宙交通管理に関する検討を進めており米国と協力して国際的なルール作りにも役割を果たしてまいります宇宙は菅政権が推進するデジタル化や地球温暖化対策の強化においても重要な役割を果たすことが期待されます昨年末に決定した宇宙基本計画工程表の改定でも明らかにした通り我が国は政府を挙げて技術力をさらに強化し同盟国である米国とともに宇宙の開発・利用の拡大に取り組んでいきます。明けましておめでとうございます。文部科学大臣の萩生田光一です。昨年末に民生用月周回有人拠点のための協力に関する日本国政府とアメリカ合衆国航空宇宙局との間の領海覚書への署名が行われまた一歩アルテミス計画の実現が近づきました昨年7月に私とブライデンスタイン NASA 長官との間でゲートウェイにおける日米の協力内容や日本人宇宙飛行士の活動機会を確認する共同宣言を行いました今回の領海覚書の署名によりこの共同宣言の内容の実現を可能とする法的枠組みが設けられましたこれは日本国政府が一丸となってアルテミス計画を進めてきた結果であり私としても大変喜ばしくまた我が国の月探査活動により一層の弾みがつくことを期待しております文部科学省としてはこれらの取り組みを着実に推進するべく令和2年度補正予算及び令和3年度予算案の合計でアルテミス計画関連予算として昨年度の4倍以上となる514億円を計上しましたこの予算を活用ししっかりと日本の貢献と月面探査に必要な技術開発を進めてまいります昨年末にはカプセル回収に成功したハヤブサ2が新たな小惑星の探査に向かったところでありこれで培った日本独自の新宇宙探査技術がアルテミス計画においても生かされていくことを期待していますまた将来アルテミス計画で持続的に活躍することを見据え本年秋ごろには新たな日本人宇宙飛行士の募集を開始する予定です近い将来日米の宇宙飛行士が共に月面で活動する姿が見られることを楽しみにしております本年もアルテミス計画をはじめ ISS 計画や宇宙科学探査等さまざまな分野で緊密に連携し引き続き日米間の宇宙協力を一層深めていきたいと考えております皆様のご検証とご託をお祈りし私からの挨拶とさせていただきます Thank you for the wonderful remarks from the Japanese government Next, it is our great pleasure to welcome our special guest from NASA I'm Steve Jerzyk, NASA Associate Administrator. I'm honored to be here today to congratulate you on your exceptional achievements of 2020 and to usher in an exciting new year for our extraordinary partnership. We stand as proud partners with Japan, 
one of the most highly accomplished nations in the world in space science and exploration. That relationship continues to deepen as we are extending our partnership to new domains from asteroids to the moon. During what has been an extraordinarily challenging year, space exploration has provided much needed inspiration and hope for the future. It was so exciting to watch the JAXA Hayabusa 2 spacecraft return samples from Ryugu to Earth successfully last month. Congratulations on an amazing mission. NASA looks forward to collaborative investigation of the samples, along with those that NASA will return in 2023 on the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft. Moreover, this year we laid the groundwork for substantial collaboration on the Artemis program. The United States and Japan signed the U.S.-Japan Joint Exploration Declaration of Intent last summer, conveying the strong commitment at the highest levels of government to proceed together in the Artemis era. Additionally, Japan was a founding signatory to the Artemis Accords, joining eight other nations in committing to principles for the exploration and use of outer space that will ensure a safe, peaceful, and prosperous future for all of humanity to enjoy. This past year, we also celebrated 20 years of humans living on the International Space Station and made history with the launch of NASA's SpaceX Crew-1 mission. Along with three NASA astronauts, we were proud and excited that the first international partner to launch on this new commercial crew vehicle was Japanese astronaut Suichi Noguchi. JAXA's contributions of the Kibo module, HTV cargo flights, and Japanese astronauts have been instrumental to realizing the significant benefits that this unique orbital laboratory is providing to the global research community. JAXA's partnership with NASA and its contributions to ISS utilization will continue to serve a pivotal role in support of ongoing ISS operations over the next several years. We also appreciate the entrepreneurial spirit and commercialization efforts supported by JAX on the ISS, and we're eager to join with Japan in furthering such commercial activities. Finally, we ended the year with another major new milestone in U.S.-Japan cooperation, signing the Memorandum of Understanding for the Cooperation on the Gateway Program. I'm very proud to join Japan in formalizing our cooperation in support of sustainable exploration in cislunar space. The goal of Artemis is not only to land the first woman and the next man on the moon, but to establish a permanent human presence there. The Gateway will support both of these objectives, enabling robust operations on the lunar surface while also serving as a testbed for a future historic human mission to Mars. Together with Canada and the European Space Agency, we have created an international partnership for lunar exploration that will enable a new era of sustainable lunar exploration by commercial and international partners. Looking ahead, we're excited about the launch of Japanese astronaut Hoshide on Crew-2 and building hardware for the Gateway. I would like to add my special appreciation for the JAXA President Yamakawa. Thank you for being a strong partner and leader. I would also like to thank our partners at all levels within the government of Japan, particularly from NEXT, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Cabinet Office, and the Japanese Embassy here in the U.S. Happy New Year, and I know that during 2021, together we will make even more awe-inspiring discoveries and continue to transform the dream of Artemis into reality. Thank you very much. It's always been a pleasure working with NASA and we look forward to maintaining our relationship going forward. Now, we'd like to move on to updates of JAXA programs. The presentation will be delivered by Yamakawa Hiroshi, president of JAXA, followed by a Q&A session. Hello everyone, Happy New Year. I'm Yamakawa Hiroshi, the president of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. Thank you for watching the Japan-U.S. Aerospace Cooperation Seminar 2021. We are honored to host this seminar, joined by our guests of honor, Ambassador Sugiyama Shinsuke of the Embassy of Japan in the United States of America, Minister Inoue Shinji of State for Space Policy of Japan, 
Minister Hagiwada Koichi of Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan, and NASA Associate Administrator Steve Jerzyk. I would like to take this wonderful opportunity to introduce the current status and the future of JAXA's program. As for the content of this presentation, I would like to start with the latest status concerning the space exploration activities, followed by an update on policies and budget, and then introduce JAXA's achievements in 2020 and major events to take place in 2021. So today, as our guests of honor mentioned in the opening, I would like to introduce the latest developments in the space exploration activities. In Japan, the decision to participate in the international space exploration proposed by the United States or the Artemis program was made by Japan's Strategic Headquarters for National Space Policy in October 2019. As we engage in international coordination and considerations on specific technical aspects to determine the scope of Japan's cooperation, Minister Hagiuda of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology signed a joint exploration declaration of intent for lunar cooperation with NASA Administrator Bridenstine in July 2020. In October 2020, the Artemis Accords were signed by eight countries Japan, the US, Canada, the UK, Italy, Australia, Luxembourg, and the UAE. The Artemis Accords are a political declaration that aims to present a common understanding among the participating countries regarding the principles of civil space exploration and utilization of outer space, including the US proposed international space exploration, the Artemis program. Furthermore, just recently in December 2020, a Memorandum of Understanding on the Gateway was signed between the Japanese government and US NASA. The MOU defines responsibilities for the detailed design, development, operation, and utilization of the Gateway and establishes the management structure. The conclusion of this MOU creates the intergovernmental legal framework that will enable the realization of cooperation on the Gateway, as confirmed in the Joint Declaration of July 2020. I would like to express my appreciation to the Japanese and US government officials for their efforts in, in concluding this MOU. Based on the government's policy, JAXA will work even closer with the United States and international partners to promote international space exploration by participating in the Artemis program, which aims for sustainable activities on the moon with an eye to Mars. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce JAXA's overall scenario for international space exploration. JAXA is continuing discussions for participation in the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway and sustainable human lunar surface exploration, contributing knowledge and technology gained from the ISS program and space science missions. For activities on the lunar surface, we are developing the Smart Lander for investigating the Moon, SLIM, which will utilize data acquired from the JAXA Lunar Orbiter Selene, or Kagya, to demonstrate precision landing technology essential for future lunar and planetary exploration. We are also planning the Lunar Polar Exploration Mission to be launched in fiscal year 2023, under consideration with the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. This mission will investigate the abundance of water and the possibilities for resource utilization in the lunar polar region. Beyond that, JAXA is studying the pressurized crew rover with a Japanese manufacturer, aiming to enable long-range crew exploration on the lunar surface. In addition, JAXA is leading the Martian Moons Exploration MMX mission to return samples from Phobos. The mission will build on the lunar exploration techniques and discoveries and is planned for launch in fiscal year 2024. JAXA will continue to work with international and industrial partners to meet this grand challenge. Next, I would like to give an update on Japan's space policy. On June 30th last year, the basic plan on space policy was revised. 
This plan sets five goals, ensuring space security, contributing to disaster management, national resilience, and solving global issues, creation of new knowledge through space science and exploration, realizing economic growth and innovation for which is the driving force through, and strengthening the comprehensive foundations of Japan's space activities, including industrial, scientific, and technological basis. Now, in the basic plan on space policy, JAXA is positioned as the core implementing agency to support the Japanese government's development and utilization of space with technology. With the revision of this space policy, JAXA's mid to long term plan has also been revised. JAXA's revised mid to long term plan focuses on six pillars, including the five pillars that were set as goals in the basic plan on space policy, and another pillar concerning the promotion of Japan's aviation industry and the enhancement of its, its international competitiveness. Next, I would like to talk about JAXA's budget. Last month, the Japanese government released its draft budget for fiscal year 2021, and for JAXA, for the first time in history, the budget exceeded 200 billion yen, reaching 214.4 billion yen, or $2,062 million at 104 yen to the dollar. This is a significant increase in JAXA's budget as a whole, and I am gratefully accepting it as a strong support from the Japanese government. Looking at the breakdown, 51.4 billion yen, or 494 million dollars, at 104 yen to the dollar, has been allocated for research and development for the Artemis program. This includes 6.1 billion yen, or 59 million dollars, for the lunar orbiting platform gateway. 37 billion yen, or 356 million dollars, for the new resupply vehicle, HTVX and 2.8 billion yen, or $27 million, for the Lunar Polar Exploration Mission. Other major items include 18.9 billion yen, or $182 million, for the H3 rocket, and 12.3 billion yen, or $118 million, for the Advanced Land Observing Satellite, ALUS-4. Japan's fiscal year starts in April, the budget is usually approved by the Diet at the end of March. Next, I would like to introduce JAXA's highlights in 2020. In 1970, Japan successfully launched its first satellite, OSIMI, into orbit, making it the fourth country in the world to launch a satellite on its own. The year 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of this event. Now I would like to look back on JAXA's activities in 2020 and introduce some notable achievements. First, let's talk about Hayabusa 2. The re-entry capsule of Hayabusa 2 finally returned to Australia on December 6th after a six-year, five billion kilometer journey. Upon opening the re-entry capsule, we have just confirmed that it contains samples thought to be collected from the asteroid Ryugu. Through its analysis, the samples are expected to contribute to research on the formation process of planets and the origin of life. The Hayabusa 2 spacecraft itself is scheduled to fly 10 billion kilometers over the next 11 years to explore a new asteroid. Last month, Prime Minister Suga presented the Hayabusa 2 project team with the Prime Minister's Award for achieving a slew of world's firsts, and we are very honored to receive this award. Hayabusa 2 is also an international cooperative mission, and I would like to express my gratitude to NASA, DLA from Germany, CNES from France, and the Australian government and related organizations for their cooperation. We will be exchanging samples with NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft and we are truly looking forward to it. Next is about Earth observation. NASA and JAXA have collaborated for more than 20 years 
through the TRIM and the GPM precipitation observation missions. We believe that there is a high affinity between JAXA's enhanced precipitation radar, which is Japan's core technology cultivated through TRIM and GPN, and NASA's ACCP study, which is currently assessing designs for next suite of atmospheric observations for aerosols, clouds, atmospheric convection, and precipitation. So JAXA is now participa participating in the study for this future mission. We hope to continue the precipitation radar observations with the United States and cont contribute to further understanding of cloud and precipitation systems. In June, in order to monitor the worldwide and unprecedented impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on the global environment and socioeconomic activities, NASA, ESA, and JAXA jointly produced the Earth Observing Dashboard, which tracks key indicators of changes based on satellite data in five areas, including air quality, climate, economic activity, agriculture, and water quality. For example, the dashboard presented the changes concerning greenhouse gases based on GOSAT observation, indicating a reduction in carbon emissions in 2020, compared to an average year in large cities around the world, such as Beijing, Tokyo, and New York. The dashboard also highlights a trend of global change based on OCO2 observation results. We believe that this is a good example of, of cooperation among space agencies that has demonstrated the benefits of using diverse Earth observation satellite data from multiple organizations. In addition, JAXA co-hosted the Space Apps COVID-19 Challenge, a virtual hackathon on the use of Earth observation data in May. In the area of space transportation, the HTV-9 or Corner 39 was launched aboard HTV Launch Vehicle No. 9 in May 2020. The UAE's Mars Probe Hope was launched by H2A Launch Vehicle No. 42 in July 2020. And the Optical Data Relay Satellite was launched aboard H2A Launch Vehicle No. 43 in November 2020, all of which were successful. These launches were conducted in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, in a highly constrained environment. However, I'm very happy that all of us involved, including international and industrial partners, were able to work together to overcome the difficulties and carry out the missions. In particular, as the launch of HTB Launch Vehicle No. 9 took place during a difficult period due to the coronavirus, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the US government, the government of Guam, and NASA for their generous support in enabling our operational personnel to travel to the JAXA tracking station in Guam and for conducting operations there, which enabled us to st successfully complete the ISS resupply mission. In the area of human spaceflight, the year 2020 marked the 20th anniversary since astronauts began their stay on the International Space Station, ISS. In addition, the cargo transfer vehicle HTV, or Kornatui, completed its mission last year without a single failure in nine launches over 11 years. Last November, JAXA astronaut Noguchi Soichi boarded the memorable first crewed operational flight of the U.S. commercial human spacecraft Crew Dragon, or Crew-1, and began a six-month expedition mission on the ISS. This is astronaut Noguchi's third space flight, and he became the first non-American astronaut to board the new U.S. spacecraft. In line with the theme of his long-duration expedition mission, Challenge, astronaut Noguchi is scheduled to conduct various missions on the ISS, such as scientific ex experiments using microgravity environment and technological demonstrations that, that will lead to future lunar exploration. We are hopeful that he will produce wonderful results through the operation and utilization of Kibo. Finally, I would like to share with you some of our major events that are scheduled for 2021. The first one is the new launch vehicle H3. This is Japan's new flagship launch vehicle that aims to achieve the three elements of flexibility, high reliability, and low cost. And its first launch is scheduled for fiscal year 2021. We are making a concerted effort 
to realize a successful launch of the H-3 rocket. And the payload carried by the first H-3 mission will be the Advanced Land Observing Satellite 3, ALOS-3 or Daichi-3. The Daichi-3 is an ob Earth observation satellite to succeed the optical mission of the Advanced Land Observing Satellite Daichi, which was launched in 2006. Daichi-3 will continuously observe the global land area and utilize its accumulated images captured during normal times and disaster situations for security purposes in a broader sense, including disaster prevention and disaster re response. It is also expected to contribute to the development and updating of geospatial information and to be used in various fields such as environmental monitoring and land cover classification in coastal areas and vegetated areas. In 2021, astronaut Hoshide Akihiko will travel to the ISS aboard the second crewed operational flight of Crew Dragon spacecraft, Crew 2, for a long duration expedition mission on the ISS. This will be Hoshide's third space flight, and he will also be the second Japanese astronaut to serve as the ISS commander following astronaut Wakata Koichi. In November last year, we also announced that astronaut Wakata and astronaut Furukawa will stay on the ISS around 2022 and 2023, respectively. In addition, JAXA will seek applicants to become new Japanese astronauts sometime this fall, based on the decision to participate in the Artemis program. I hope you will look forward to further accomplishments by our Japanese astronauts. Today, I have introduced the current status and the future of JAXA's programs. I would like to conclude my presentation by asking for your continued support and cooperation. In closing, I would like to wish you all a wonderful year in 2021. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Yamakawa, for the presentation. I can see an exciting year ahead of us given the budget increase and ongoing projects. Now, I'd like to ask you a few questions to discuss each topic a little deeper. So my first question is, it is great to hear that JAXA's budget for 2021 has increased significantly. Could you tell us about its details and the outlook for the future? Well, thank you for your question. The draft JAXA budget for fiscal year 2021 released last month by the Japanese government for the first time in history exceeded $2 billion. As I noted, this is a significant increase in JAXA budget as a whole, which means a strong support from the Japanese government. Looking at the breakdown, especially remarkable in the budget increase is that allocated for research and development for the Artemis program. The budget increases from $115 million to $494 million. This includes $59 million for the Cislunar Orbiting Platform Gateway, $356 million for the new resupplied vehicle HTVX, and $27 million for the Lunar Polar mission Exploration Mission. JAXA would like to contribute to the Artemis program in many aspects. Other major items include $118 million for the Advanced Land Observing Satellite ALS-4 to be launched in fiscal year 2022, $77 million for the Innovative Satellite Technology Demonstration Program to offer access to space for commercial and institutional entities who wish to demonstrate innovative and new critical space parts for key technologies in orbit using their own microsatellites. And $36 million for the SA system in collaboration with MOD, and $184 million for space science. That all sounds very promising. So my second question is, the signing of the Gateway MOU is a big step towards the realization of the Artemis program, which Japan will participate in as an important international partner. There was also an announcement that Japan will be recruiting new astronauts this fall. 
How are you planning to have the astronauts participate in the Artemis program in the future? Well, thank you very much for the great question. The Memorandum of Understanding of the Gateways, signed between the Japanese government and NASA just recently in December 2020, defines responsibilities for the detailed design, development, operation, and utilization of the gateway, and establishes the management structure. The conclusion of this MOU creates the intergovernmental legal framework that will enable the realization of cooperation on the gateway, as confirmed in the joint declaration of July 2020. The participation of the Japanese astronauts will be discussed and coordinated between the government of Japan and NASA based on this gateway MOU. JAXA is engaged in detailed technical deliberations of how we can re realize the long-term stay on board the gateway and landing on the lunar surface by the Japanese astronauts based on our core competencies accumulated through the ISS and space science programs. How exciting! I can't wait to see this happen! The third question is, what is JAXA's view of the Artemis Accords? Well, JAXA is not in a position to represent the government of Japan who signed the Artemis Accords, but we understand the Artemis Accords are a political declaration that aims to present a common understanding among the participating countries re regarding the principles of civil space exploration and utilization of outer space in a safe and transparent environment. I see. So question four is, the new basic plan on space policy and JAXA's mid to long-term plan emphasize ensuring space security. So how will JAXA contribute to space security? Well, thank you for the question. Well, toward stable and sustainable use of outer space, JAXA is engaged in the development of SSA system contribution to the rulemaking at IADC, and debris removal technologies. JAXA is also contributing through our technical expertise to the Government of Japan's activities for ensuring space security. Those are all very important roles that JAXA can play. The last question is, inauguration of the new administration will take place in just a few days. Do you have any expectations or messages for the future of Japan-U.S. cooperation? Well, uh, the cooperation in space between Japan and the United States is based on trust and developed through long-standing efforts by so many people of both countries. JAXA would like to further strengthen collaboration with the United States in many areas, such as space exploration, including the Artemis program, human space activities including the ISS program, space science, earth science, SSA, and aeronautics. Before we close this session, we have a special video message from Dr. Wakata Koichi, astronaut and senior advisor of JAXA. Happy New Year to you. I am Koichi Wakata, JAXA astronaut. I am very pleased to see that the Gateway MOU has been signed between the government of Japan and NASA. This provides a legal framework between our governments to promote cooperation on Gateway. I would like to thank all the people in Japan and the United States who have contributed to this effort. I realize that we are now at the dawn of a new era in space exploration. And this will be the beginning of a great challenge for Japan. Over the years, Japan and the United States have together developed human space activities in low Earth orbit, from missions on the space shuttle to long duration missions on the ISS. We are proud to have built this trust and track record together, as this is a foundation of the Gateway Corporation and eventually the Artemis era. Currently, JAXA astronaut Noguchi is on board the ISS, to be followed by astronaut Hoshide this year. After that, astronaut Furukawa and I are scheduled to stay on the ISS. Together with astronauts from the United States and other ISS partner nations, we are working hard to prepare for our ISS missions, which serve as the foundation for the Artemis program. 
I am confident that the close partnership between Japan and the United States will further expand the potential of humanity in the future. With Japan's decision to participate in the Artemis program, JAXA will start recruiting new astronauts this fall. And I cannot wait for the time to come when JAXA astronauts play an active role on the lunar surface. That was such a wonderful, inspiring message from astronaut Wakata on international space exploration and US-Japan partnership. So this marks the end of today's program. Thank you very much for your participation. We hope that you found this event meaningful. Lastly, we hope to see each of you in person very soon. Happy New Year and have a great rest of the day.